welcome back guys we are discussing about inflammatory mediators right now let's discuss about arachidonic acid metabolites so what exactly are these arachidonic acid metabolites first of all what is this arachidonic acid and how it is going to help us in producing the inflammatory mediators see you need to know every cell is made up of cell membranes in the cell membranes okay in the cell membranes there is something called as phospholipids so phospholipids so the phospholipids which are present in the cell membrane during inflammatory conditions when they are acted upon by an enzyme they are going to break down the phospholipids are going to break down into a substance called as arachidonic acid okay arachidonic acid and who is going to help in this breakdown the phospholipids conversion into arachidonic acid the enzyme is called as phospholipase so it makes sense right phospholipase it is going to break down the phospholipids okay phospholipase a2 rc phospholipase a2 or phospholipase c okay now this arachidonic acid now it can enter into different pathways okay now it is entering say into different different pathways for the production of different types of inflammatory mediators if it is acted upon by an enzyme called as cyclooxygenase a different types of inflammatory mediators are produced if it goes into lipooxygenase pathway different types of mediators it can either go into cytochrome p450 okay uh, epoxygenase pathway or it can be acted upon by something called as iso icosanoid pathway for example see the arachidonic acid <coughs> if this thing if it is going into cyclooxygenase pathway do you know which substances are going to be produced prostaglandins are produced if it is going through the lipooxygenase pathway so if this arachidonic acid if it is acted upon by cytochrome p450 epoxygenase then epoxy icosa trionic acid is going to be produced eet is going to be produced and in the last pathway iso icosanoid pathway iso prostein is going to be produced iso prostein so these are the different like you know end products okay you will understand uh, like uh, little in better for example say let's begin with the first pathway okay for your exam you need to know these pathways the first and second pathways in detail so first let's begin our topic with cyclooxygenase pathway this okay, cyclooxygenase pathway so in this cyclooxygenase pathway you already know it so let's come from the beginning membrane phospholipids so membrane phospholipids are going to break down okay with the help of same phospholipase a2 or phospholipase c with the help of this enzyme it's going to break down into arachidonic acid till here you already know it arachidonic acid the point which i want you to know is have you ever <coughs> heard about steroids or immunosuppressants steroids are anti inflammatory do you know why see if you use the drug steroids <coughs> dexamethasone hydrocortisone like you know the steroid kind of drugs so the steroids like dexamethasone beta methasone the steroids are going to inhibit this phospholipase a2 so when phospholipase a2 is inhibited then do you think arachidonic acid is going to produce this arachidonic acid no arachidonic acid is not going to produce without arachidonic acid do you think inflammatory mediators are going to be produced no so in that way it's going to inhibit the steroids are going to inhibit the inflammation anti inflammatory <coughs> okay now what happened to this arachidonic acid see right now we are discussing about the cyclooxygenase pathway so now this arachidonic acid when it is acted upon by an enzyme called as cyclooxygenase there are two types of cyclooxygenase that is type 1 and type 2 but anyway when this arachidonic acid is acted upon by an enzyme called as cyclooxygenase now prostaglandin okay pgg2 is produced prostaglandin g2 is produced okay prostaglandin G2 molecules is produced first. So this is our precursor. Okay, prostaglandin G2 is produced. Now this prostaglandin G2, when it is acted upon by peroxidases, okay, peroxidase, 
now prostaglandin h2 is produced okay pg h2 okay pg h2 is produced now this pg h2 now it can enter into three different pathways okay it can enter into three different pathways what are they look this prostaglandin h2 it can enter into thromboxane synthase pathway okay for example this pg h2 if it is acted upon by thromboxane synthase thromboxane synthase is an enzyme now now this pathway is happening in the platelets okay now this pathway is happening in the platelets so this pg h2 when it is acted upon by thromboxane synthase then thromboxane synthase helps in the production of thromboxane <coughs> okay so this is thromboxane a2 thromboxane a2 is coming and what is the point of this thro thromboxane a2 what is the uh, work okay what is the function of this thromboxane a2 is platelet aggregation okay platelet aggregation so prostaglandin G2 is going to be converted into prostaglandin H2. When this prostaglandin H2, when it is acted upon by enzyme called as a thromboxin A2, the thromboxin A2 is going to be produced. Okay, the thromboxin synthase is going to help in the production of thromboxin A2, and the thromboxin A2 is going to cause a platelet aggregation, platelet aggregation followed by clot formation. Okay, next this prostaglandin H2, when it is acted upon by an enzyme called as prostaglandin E2, <coughs> prostaglandin E2. D2, F2, alpha synthase. Okay. When it is acted upon by the synthase, prostaglandin E2, D2, F2 synthase. Then prostaglandin E2 is going to be produced. Prostaglandin D2 and prostaglandin F2 alpha is going to be produced. Now, what is the function of this prostaglandin E2? Why do we need it? Prostaglandin E2 is the one which causes the pain, okay, which increases the pain. Prostaglandin D2 is going to cause the vasodilation mainly. Vasodilation. And prostaglandin F2 alpha, which is also called as a carboprost, which causes the uterine contractions. It can cause uterine contractions. Okay, these are the points which I want you to know. So, prostaglandin H2, it can, it can produce thromboxin A2 true. It can produce prostaglandins like D2, E2, F2. Next, the same prostaglandin H2, prostacyclin synthase. Who is going to be produced? Prostacyclin, the name itself is that it is going to synthesize the prostacyclins. So, what is that prostacyclin, sir? The prostacyclin is PGI2, which is also called as prostacyclin. So, what is prostacyclin will do? The prostacyclins will cause vasodilation. It will cause vasodilation as well as anti-platelet aggregation. Okay, anti-platelet aggregation means inhibits the platelet aggregation. Okay, so this is about the cyclooxygenase pathway. So in cyclooxygenase pathway, at the end of the day, look here, which substances are getting produced? Prostaglandins. First, prostaglandin G2, prostaglandin H2. This prostaglandin H2 can produce thromboxane A2. Prostaglandin D2, E2, F2 as well as prostaglandin I2. So, this is the prostaglandin pathway. So, these are the different types of prostaglandins and their functions. After the prostaglandin pathway, now let's discuss about the leukotriene pathway or the lipooxygenase pathway. Lipooxygenase pathway. Okay. So, lipooxygenase pathway. In this lipoxygenase pathway, again, let's begin with the membrane phospholipids. Okay, membrane phospholipids. See, this membrane phospholipids, again, same thing you write when it is acted upon by phospholipase A2. Arachidonic acid is going to be produced. Now, this arachidonic acid, see, now this arachidonic acid, it is acted upon by a different enzyme. What is the name of that enzyme? 5 lipooxygenase. 5 lipooxygenase. When it is acted upon by 5 lipooxygenase, then leukotriene A4 is going to be produced. Okay, leukotriene A4. Now, this leukotriene A4, it's going to be acted upon by an enzyme called as leukotriene C4 synthase. Okay, see, now it is acted upon by leukotriene C4 synthase. 
Now, in the name itself, is it, then who is going to be produced? Leukotriene C4 is going to be produced. Now, this leukotriene C4 is going to be converted into leukotriene D4. Okay, leukotriene D4. But what is the enzyme that is helping in this conversion from leukotriene C4 to leukotriene D4? It is gamma glutamyl transferase. Gamma glutamyl transferase. The gamma glutamyl transferase. Now, this leukotriene D4 it is going to be converted into leukotriene E4 with the help of an enzyme called as dipeptidase. So, at the end of the day, what we have synthesized? Leukotriene C4, D4, E4. At the end of the day, we have synthesized the leukotriene, different types of leukotriene C4, D4, E4. Okay. See, these leukotrienes are the most potent bronchoconstrictors most potent bronchoconstrictors okay simple completed so now you know it's a arachidonic acid when it is acted upon by this enzyme see in different different cells different different enzymes are there okay so when arachidonic acid when it is acted upon by when it is going into the 5 lipoxidase pathway leukotriene a4 is going to be produced from the leukotriene a4 to c4 c4 to d4 d4 to e4 okay now the same leukotriene a4 it when it is acted upon by leukotriene a4 hydrolase <coughs> leukotriene a4 hydrolase then leukotriene B4 is going to be produced. Okay, leukotriene B4. What is the function of this leukotriene B4? The leukotriene B4, yes, of course, is a bronchoconstrictor, no doubt. But I have explained you. Interleukin 8, leukotriene B4, okay, uh, C5A, C5A, interleukin 8, LTB4, these are all chemotactic agents. Chemotaxis, very important chemoattractant helps in the process of chemotaxis for the neutrophils okay helps in the neutrophil recruitment like you know you know it next after this see now in the arachidonic acid when it is going to 12 lipooxygenase pathway then not the leukotrienes different types of inflammatory mediators are produced which are called as lipoxins okay lipoxins lipoxin a4 and lipoxin B4, lipoxin A4 and lipoxin B4. Now, this lipoxins, these are anti-inflammatory molecules. They are anti-inflammatory. Okay, anti-inflammatory. I have already explained you the anti-inflammatory interleukin. Interleukin 10, it's anti-inflammatory. Interleukin 4 and 6, they are also anti-inflammatory, but they are also pro-inflammatory, both pro and anti-inflammatory. This lipoxins, which are coming through the 12 lipoxinase pathway, they are also anti-inflammatory. With this, the lipoxinase pathway, where the leukotrienes and lipoxins are getting produced, and the cyclooxygenase pathway, where you have you can see that thromboxins, prostacyclins, and prostaglandins are getting produced. With this, the arachidonic acid metabolites is completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.